Today I'm going to be doing a colored pencil tutorial of these cherries. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I am currently in the middle of a move and so I'm running out of time on trying to get artwork done. So I went through some of my old footage. I found all of the original footage from my Polychromos versus Luminance colored pencil video. If you've not checked that out, a link will pop up here. But on that video, I rushed through the actual drawing so quickly that you really can't see what I'm doing. So today I'm going to walk you through step by step how I completed these. This one is being done completely in Polychromos. You guys know I love mixing Polychromos and luminance together, but because it was from the comparison video, this one is 100% polychromos. If I were to redo this again, I would definitely use at least the white luminance mixed in with this. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over there where the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you guys now. Well, let's get on to this tutorial. I'm starting with my background on this one. I have put a layer of masking tape down. Because I'm using the Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper, this paper is really thick and I don't really have to worry about it ripping with the masking tape, especially given that that masking tape isn't gonna be on there long. As I put my first layer of black, I don't need to worry about it being too dark and I don't wanna push too hard because that would damage the tooth of the paper, preventing me from putting additional layers, which in the end would really mean that my final black would not not be dark enough. So I've got to start fairly light. Once I get my first layer on there, I go over that with magenta, blend that out with Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. If you don't have access to that, the Gamsol odorless mineral spirit works exactly the same. I recently tested that out. I let that dry and then I'm putting another layer of black. Once I get this layer of black, I will go over that again with the magenta. I'm adding the magenta because I don't want this black to be too flat. It, the black ends up actually coming out darker if I add another color in with it, or it appears darker anyway. Now I am moving on to the cup. Now here with this reference photo, it's available over on Paint My Photo at pmp-art.com by Lily and Bell is the photographer. And when you're looking at the reference photo, that pewter cup has a lot of very abstract shapes. Really everything when you're working in art. If you can get yourself to look at the abstract shape and copy it as you see it, the end result will look realistic. But as I was doing this, the inside of that didn't look like anything. It just looked like a mess of lines. So I've got to pay attention to where my lights and darks are going. I'm using various shades of cool grays. I think I've got a couple of warm grays, but mostly it's the cool grays that I'm using here. Again, looking at those abstract shapes, because even here, when you look at that on the side of the cup, it doesn't look like a whole lot of anything. I've got to teach myself to copy what I'm seeing, just copy those shapes. Now, one of the things that you want to watch for, the pewter cup, the top of that, it looks like it's almost white. It's really not that light. It's just because it's up against the black, it creates such high contrast that it appears that way. So make sure you're checking your values as you work. For the table, I am just blocking in the solid colors here, I will go back through then and add the shadows under the cherries. Now the shadows under the cherries, which I apparently was missing a clip of video for, those are not finished. I'm gonna come back through and touch those up once I've got the cherries in themselves. If I try to do it right now, it's really hard for me to judge my values because I'm up against the white of the cherries. Once those are in, it'll be easy for me to, to know how dark I need to go. Onto the cherries themselves, I am using so many colors here of different, purples, reds, oranges, peaches. I mean, there are tons of colors mixed in here and layered. And this is just like I was talking about with the pewter cup where you're paying attention to these abstract shapes. Now, the great news is if you're thinking, oh, I can't draw a perfect circle, you don't need to. These are not perfect circles at all. If they were, they would not look very natural. Now, all of these lights and darks, they're just reflections of what's around the cherry. I mean, cherries technically, yeah, they're one solid color, but they're very, very shiny, very glossy, and so everything around them is reflecting on them. And that's why you can see I've got the orange at the base of the first cherry. That's reflecting the table below it. All of this is a reflection, and so paying attention to that, again, going back to your reference photo, paying attention to where those lights and those darks are is a pretty big deal. Now, the great news is if you're a little off and your dark is too far to the left and your light was too wide or, I mean, anything like that, it's not the end of the world. No one's really going to notice. Just go for close, but making sure that you're paying attention to that. Don't get lazy and think, oh, it's a cherry. I'm just going to shade it all in red. That won't look very realistic at all. You will have a good cartoon cherry though. 
The other thing I want to point out, notice that nothing's actually outlined. There's no dark line going around the subject. This is something that I see happen a lot where people want to define their subject by outlining it. There's no outline. My I'm separating my subject, like the cherry, from the background just by how I apply my contrast, my lights and my darks, but there's no actual outlines. Now that I've got more of the cherries in, you can see that I keep going back and better defining the shadows underneath them. It's just a lot easier to judge my color or my values now that those cherries are in. It's so much easier to see if I need to be darker or lighter. Now you'll see the the white polychromos that I'm using here, it does lighten things up a little bit, but normally this is not my go-to pencil ever for white. The Luminance White or even the Derwent Drawing Chinese White, these are very opaque colors, whereas the Polychromos White is quite translucent. So it's great for burnishing. You can slightly lighten things up, but if you want them a lot lighter, then go with one of the wax-based colored pencil whites instead. So here I really had to make sure that I didn't go too dark because it wasn't something that I was going to easily be able to lighten back up with this pencil. Now just defining everything on the handle of that pewter cup and I'm again back to copying those abstract shapes from my reference photo because not a whole lot of that makes sense. Now this leaf, I really rushed through. I think take your time, slow down when you get to leaves. If you're really trying to create just a beautiful piece of artwork, when you've got something like this, a leaf, it's so easy to look at it and go, oh, it's a leaf, it's not important. I'm just gonna skip through it really quickly. Every single part of your piece is just as important as every other part. And here, here's a good lesson in me rushing and this leaf I think looked terrible by the time I was done with it because I really wasn't taking my time and making sure that I got all those fine little details in there. So when you're doing roses or any florals, really put just as much attention into the leaves as you do in your subject. Because if that leaf is not as good as everything else, it pulls down the overall quality of the whole piece. For me, I wasn't too worried about it because I was just doing a quick demonstration for the cherries themselves for that the comparison video. But when you're doing your own work, don't skip over stuff like I did here. The nice thing with these polychromos pencils, you can see how very, very sharp most of these are as I'm working. They're great for fine detail. And I'm usually using the Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner to blend out my first layer or two with the, each cherry and then the rest of it, because these are such small areas, I'm just burnishing over them for all of the blending to get the colors really rich. If you're unfamiliar with what burnishing means, I have a video talking about different ways that you can blend colored pencils. A little card will pop up, so definitely check that out if you've not seen it. And that is my finished piece. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over there where the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google Plus. All of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Seriously, my studio right now looks like a really horrible episode of Hoarders. It's driving me crazy. I like everything organized and all pretty and that is definitely not the case right now. This is an absolute disaster. Good news is I should have a studio tour of my new studio in a couple of weeks for you guys. Yay!